this is um this is our fourth uh, our fourth week here in the new space. I like it small. It's intimate. I like it. 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 I said it three times. What do you say we like move forward, right? And we get the whole science thing over with as quickly as possible. What do you say? Yeah. Let's get it over with. All right. Beat Goldie, come on out here and let's get this fucking thing over with. How you doing, Pete? Uh, fine. You got your Cassini Orbiter revved up and ready to go. Yeah, I don't know if the, uh... Someday that's going to impress somebody. Um, and it'll be damaged in seconds. Okay, oh. so did anything funny or interesting happen in space this week? Um, yeah. I don't believe you. The toilet broke. <laughs> the toilet broke in space? Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, well that's bad. Yeah. It's, um, you know, karma. We're gonna see an illustration here. This is, ooh, look at that. Do it again. Okay. There it is again. Is that like a... Okay, you know what that is? That, that is the, um... Tool bag. Tool bag from the International Space Station. It got loose. What are you calling tool bag? And that is a, well, you know, maybe a hundred thousand dollars. They just threw a number out. They don't know what it really costs. It's from NASA. It's gotta be over a million. But you know, it had a grease gun in there. What a grease gun running about fifteen dollars. It had some uh, cloth wipes, some you know, and dry wipes, and a um, couple powered screwdrivers. They're about twenty bucks each. Yeah, over a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, uh, the ironic thing about it is, uh, uh, someone offered it for sale on eBay. Say it landed in a golf course, and they want ten thousand dollars for it. But it's funny. If you go and get a telescope, <laughs> it's. Still, still in orbit. Families all together. Still in orbit. It's about a mile ahead of the space station. How it got ahead of the space station, I don't know. And everyone was running, uh, was all interested in the, in the urine reprocessor on, on the International Space Station. <laughs> it's also funny. Yeah. I declare urine reprocessing funny. Yeah, they worked real hard on it. You heard they had some problems. It wasn't running initially. And they worked and they fiddled and they worked and they fiddled. And, they fiddled, and um, uh -huh. well, it, it's now working. Which finally leads to that important question. You know, that big question we have is, how does it taste? Tastes like iron. Like Wait, let me guess. Tangy. <laughs> so, without further ado, I bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, the oracle of the Odeon Bar, Dr. Hal. Here he is. Love seeketh not itself to please, not for itself has any care, but for another gives its ease, and builds a heaven in hell's despair. So sang a little clod of clay trodden by the cattle's feet, but a pebble of the spring warbled out these meters meet. Love seeketh only self to please. To bind another to its delight, joys in another's loss of ease, and builds a hell in a heaven's despite. Mm -hmm. huh? What about that, huh? And I want to thank uh, Rusty Blazenhoff for, for uh, cooking these exquisite cookies. Man, I think uh, they're chocolate chip and they're slightly seared at the bottom just like Mother used to make. In fact, she brought her mother along in case we run out of them, uh, we could get her mother busy preparing some more. Uh, but, uh, of course, I'm happy to see each and every one of you. However, it is uh, more interesting how does Batman get all his gear inside his utility belt, which claims no such uh, supernatural agency. Uh, hope your day is delightful, hope it's magic too, hope it's like a bright, enchanted fairy tale come true. <laughs> it's a birthday card, it's not a Christmas card. Hope it's like a rabbit leopard escaping from the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, wait a minute. Uh, what are you doing? Tearing, ripping, rending my birthday card. You know, the time is in the scene, where I am. I was gonna duct tape at the camera up to head. Uh, <laughs> Can I do that? 
I suppose you can do whatever you want. I mean, it's your show, but uh, <laughs> somebody might want me to see Cinderella's uh, message, his card, whatever. Okay. Next. Why does K-Rob have to play that music so damn loud? Because it's not barely audible chamber music in the background, but it is in fact the very current of this show, which propels us farther and deeper. Yes, folks, there's only one K-Rob and we are gone. Hey Rob, can you please calibrate to the program that we're having here? He's doing rather well, I think. <laughs> oh, that's right. Please come and drink the Burnett before the uh, yeah. Well, I guess it's going to be a K-Rob moment. There you go. Yeah. But K-Rob, you have to drink them both at the same time. In verse. <laughs> okay, I was just kidding about that. Um, we're always happy to provide for that, for a K-Rob, anything else. Yeah. Let's, let's move on. You have to believe, you have to trust, uh, equally, uh, that this show has been engineered by an architect, of a showman, of some the renown. The yeoman of the show. Yes. <laughs> you would, and will, buy a new star in this game. For the right. Can you recommend me a good shampoo and conditioner for my coarse and unruly pubic hair? <laughs> There's a new shampoo that can do for you what no other shampoo has been able to do. It's new suave pubic hair shampoo. <laughs> And, uh, Horse and unruly, huh? Okay, where does Frank Chu get supplies for his signs? Yes, Frank Chu is here. I don't know. That could be a proprietary secret. But if he would like to answer, I've offered one of this myself. Could we get Frank Chu to an yeah. Frank? Oh, I will use it over my science, the science graphics and science is still on. It's over there on Venice and Broadway and also the other pieces that the sign. I was able to buy some of the supplies from the, from the Marcus or Ace Hardware and just fix the sign up and, uh, and I'll fix it myself and buy, buy the rest of it from the sign of graphics. Okay, Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. Hmm. Well, not enough buffaloes, but uh, there's some grammar left. The word buffalo, as I said before, means to hornswoggle or to deceive. Uh, here's our sentence. Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. Oh, you didn't say enough buffaloes. It has the right amount of buffalo. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. Now this actually is like a loop. This comes back to the beginning in an ingenious way. It also says a lot about human nature, that is, if we will allow a buffalo or bison to stand in for in an... Okay, uh... Alright, we just have a couple more questions. I haven't even gotten to this one yet. You're not paying attention, I'm sorry. Uh, the floor broke! The floor broke again! The floor broke? Ladies and gentlemen, I have no insurance. Don't break the floor now. Okay, uh, buffalo from Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, buffalo, right? They bamboozle or cheat. Here's the verb. Buffalo, buffalo, buffalo. Who do they bamboozle or cheat? Buffalo, buffalo. Other buffaloes uh, uh, from Buffalo, New York, right? Buffalo, 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 buffalo. What kind of buffaloes do buffaloes from Buffalo, New York, buffalo? They are, in fact, uh, buffalo, buffalo. You see? Buffalo, buffalo. From buffaloes from Buffalo, New York. Buffalo or cheat. 
Buffalo Buffalo, other buffaloes from Buffalo, New York, who are a kind of buffalo, that buffalo, buffalo. No one's going to be cheated who doesn't possess the ability to be cheated. All right, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Howard.